currently we spend most of our resources on incarceration. We heard all, all about the, the sad details of that, and not very much on people building. Uh, and, and that's really where we have to make a, a huge shift. Um, the people are our assets as much as the earth is our asset and, and uh, the uh, natural resources are our assets. Uh, and we have to believe in and have faith in the fact that human behavior can transform, that the people who are uh, behaving in an antisocial manner uh, are, are doing it because they are reacting to uh, bad behavior that was inflicted upon them or not having the kind of support that they needed. Uh, you know, there's, there's also mental health issues. There's a wide range of why people have antisocial behavior, but there's a, a, an enormous number of folks who, if treated appropriately and given the skills, uh, would, would definitely not have that behavior in our society. So I'm going to tell you, uh, as, a, as a city council member, again, so similar to you, I, I'm not speaking so much from what I've been doing as a council member on this issue although I, I do a lot of work on reentry, um, not necessarily making a formal policy, but just making sure that the right people are talking to each other. Uh, what I did do is create, help to create a fund to uh, fund violence prevention programs, and that sort of helped get, get some things rolling. And that's a parcel tax. I, I, <laughs> I know you probably don't like that tax, but, but it has helped us uh, get, get some of this stuff going. Um, uh, there are two people in my community, Banya Davis, who I don't know if people know her, I, um, Angela Davis' is sister, and Aisha Klati, uh, who has an organization called Attitudinal Healing Connection, came to me and, and taught me about restorative justice. And it was really not a terminal, term, uh, terminology that I had uh, much familiarity with. Uh, the concept is that in our current justice system, we have, if somebody commits a crime, you focus on the, the person who committed the crime, the crime, uh, the law that they broke, and a, a sort of patriarchal uh, system where, where the, the government comes in and says, oh, I, I'm going to fix this for you. You don't worry about it. You're, you're the victim. Uh, we're we're going to punish and, and get that person out of the community, and, and that's the way they solve the problem. Uh, it, it has no lasting uh, effect. It's, it's not a good way to do it. Uh, this punishment. Sometimes punishment works and sometimes punishment is appropriate, but in most of the situations it's way more complicated than that and, and, and punishment is really not the solution. In restorative justice you are uh, focusing on who was harmed, uh, how do you heal that person, and bringing in the person who did the harming uh, to, to get them to commit to some uh, plan of action that will uh, help heal the person who was harmed. And, and that, ha that has to be done by bringing them together uh, working out an agreement, and it's often not just two parties. It's where the society failed in the first place to provide all those support systems to the to the fellow who's on, on the uh, uh, about to get executed. That where, where we never uh, brought all those systems to bear to to help that person early on. Uh, so in in coming to this alternative system of, of restorative justice, you bring together the parties. And you think about not only how they are responsible, but are there a broader community? Uh, uh, is there a broader community responsibility to also bring into the picture to to undo the wrong that was uh, that was made? And the platforms for doing this are uh, called peacemaking circles. A lot from the Native uh, American culture and other um, in interesting uh, cultural uh, heritage brought into that. Uh, family group conferences. Uh, and and we, because we already have a lot of people incarcerated, we have to figure out how do we bring them back into the community, uh, the re-entry issues, and so we have circles of support and accountability to help figure out how they're going to manage as they come back to, to the neighborhoods. Uh, as, uh, so, so Fania and uh, Aisha explained all this to me, and we decided we were really going to try to implement this in Oakland. Uh, we started a small organization called uh, Our Joy, Restorative Justice for Oakland Youth. And we, we started by training people in the community to be practitioners in these uh, platforms like the circles or, or the, the family group conferences, et cetera. And so we've seeded the community with a lot of skilled people who can now be these facilitators and practitioners. Uh, we we um, spoke to the judge from the juvenile court, the presiding judge of the juvenile court, who is a wonderful, uh, very creative and supportive uh, person, uh, Judge Gail Barriola. She's gotten on board and is very excited about it. And uh, what I'll pass out to you at the end is, is the strategic plan that we worked on with uh, Judge Barriola uh, in the county. Uh, Oakland is just the one city in our county to really transform the entire county uh, juvenile justice system uh, in, in, to make it a restorative justice system. Uh, and we want to do it not just in the, the, the juvenile uh, court system, because then you're, you're, you're 
um, you're jumping in when there's already been uh, behavior that's antisocial, but how do, we, how do we go back even further to the schools to, to make sure that uh, the, the youngsters have the tools to uh, relate to each other in a way that they don't uh, have the kinds of conflicts and fights that, uh, that they, they currently have. So we, we started a pilot uh, at one middle school in my district. Uh, we we um, funded a, a specific person who full-time works in that school to teach all the teachers how to do peacemaking circles in their classes, to, to bring the kids uh, to a circle, to learn how to empathize with each other. They do exercises that help uh, youngsters know about each other in deeper and deeper fashion. So they really uh, can get to know each other and care about each other in such a way that if a, if a disagreement arises, they, they call up the circle again and the circle works on, on uh, undoing the, the conflict. Um, this has worked fabulously. Uh, we've, last year we had no fights on campus at all in this school. Uh, suspensions down 50% and no expulsions at all. Not, not even any referrals to expulsions. So again, it's a system that works. We know it can work. Why aren't we doing it? Uh, and, and you heard me uh, probably the first night talking about things that we must bring to scale immediately. The, the urgency is there. The talent is there. The, uh, the system that we know is works is there. The data is there. So it's, it's really time to put it into action. And I actually submitted it as a, uh, an economic stimulus I, uh, part of our city's economic stimulus package. Because it will not only reduce the expense of, of uh, the prisons, but it will uh, put people into employment in a new kind of way. I mean, uh, lawyers get paid, judges get paid. We need to pay these practitioners, though, mm -hmm. so that they can also be in the community and, and uh, share these skills. Uh, and that's, that's something that, that still needs to be funded, and we have to figure out how to fund that. So where's Annie Casey? <laughs> Uh, let me pass these out to you. The, these are the, uh, our strategic plan. Uh, this is actually our draft. We haven't finalized it yet. But uh, if you want to uh, try to implement it in your county, it might uh, act as a, as a good foundation. And that's my presentation. Questions or comments for the panel? Um, one of the thing, places where I think a lot of these things overlap is around um, comes back a little bit to diet and food too because one of the things that you know there, there's documentation out of England that if uh, you know you feed prisoners better diets that they actually the incidences of, of um, uh, violence or different things in prison actually decreases by 30 to a little bit around 30 percent and that feeding that better diet is only vitamins and minerals so it's not even that great a diet, dietary improvement, you know? I mean, so if you could do some of these other things that incorporate that together with all of these, you know, the, the other education and, and just treatment of, of people, I think that's, like, in schools, if you actually... Fed you them, have the power to change. Maybe there would be some Watch way, you know, it's, it's a matter of respect, but also of, of um, overall mind, well, mind and body well-being. And I think that that's kind of an important link with some of this work. Comments, observations, best of intention. 